all right everyone welcome back to another video and today i have something different it is a dev board but it's not like other dev boards this is an fpga dev board now i have been after this particular model for quite a while now and i have been finally able to buy it um again this is not a product that i got for review this is something that i intend uh, for personal use and uh, you know to learn about FPGAs and stuff it might be a bit overkill uh, and many people will think that it's a bit overkill for an FPGA dev board there are many cheaper ones out there but I've bought this particular one for the sock that's on it uh, we'll take a closer look so this is the DE10 Nano from uh, Terrasic uh, and then their ASIC, that's probably the intended pronunciation for it. Um, so, uh, a bit more things if you find the video recording today a bit different, uh, it's because it's being recorded from my phone. And uh, if just let me know about the setup, uh, it, it's probably going to be in 4K. Um, and I don't know how good the quality is going to be because it's still a phone it's not a full size sensor um, but you know just let me know if the mics all good and if the uh, video quality is all good then I'll stick to this otherwise I am uh, willing to go back to what my older setup was so at the back of the box we have everything laid out and we'll go through all of this once I have the product out uh, and this is a kit uh, this is a proper kit and i'll show you why so let's go ahead and open up the box and again to be frank i have been uh you know inside and i have seen everything that's in there because i was just too excited again a well labeled um you know a pamphlet and another pamphlet but this one will do and then uh in at the back side we have all the boot options and um instructions i guess so all right so let's let's go ahead and open up the box nice little foam cover again if you pay the price you are going to get this these are the feet uh, feet for the board and we will we'll see how they end up in the on the actual platform and this is the board itself so it's already in the uh, acrylic case kind of just just a shield not a proper case but uh, i i haven't added this uh, after opening it up it was already in the acrylic case and they do give an sd card uh, with the board so i hope it focuses yep, there we have the SD card and a shiny new board. So it's an 8 gigabyte. What is it? An 8 gigabyte class 4 micro SD card. I'm not sure why it's a class 4. It should have been a class 10, but I guess uh, the uh, boot speed don't really matter much. Uh, and uh, this is the front of the board probably should hold it in the right direction and as you can see yep, we have an Altera Cyclone 5 SoC uh, an ARM chip but uh, bought then by Intel so Al Altera Altera whatever you want to call it was bought by Intel uh, probably in lieu of their you know uh, probably seeing that how much uh, arm ip they had and it was an easy gain for intel to have their ip uh, so yeah there, there is the board we'll go through all of the specs uh, and you know all, all of the components that there are uh, this is a 5 volt 2 amp uh, usb charger uh, as you would expect in a kit and then here's a uh, micro usb to usb and a uh, micro b to a uh, usb and we will we'll, uh, get to it when we are through the specs why they are included and apart from that there is not much i was expecting a book uh, instructions manual kind of a thing a more detailed one 
but apparently they don't ship it anymore there is one for this particular model of the board but they don't ship it anymore so um all right let's talk about the uh, board itself now All right, so now the board should be visible a bit more clearly and we can see the SOC itself. Uh, a few more components on the board that I can specifically you know, figure it out. So these two are the one gig of DDR3 RAM. Uh, this one is the HDMI uh, chip set for the HDMI output. And then uh, we have 40 GPIO pins in uh, on both the sides. So that's a total of 80 GPIO pins. And then we have uh, the Arduino Uno compatible uh, pinout uh, as well. Uh, and some analog to digital and digital to analog stuff. Uh, and uh, four other things I'll have to go through uh, the, uh, the cheat sheet that I have. So, uh, so this is a USB OTG for to connect keyboard, mouse and other stuff. And this is a UART output. So this is micro and then this one is mini B. So um, yeah, OTG and UART. So that's nice. I don't have to uh, have a separate uh, UART to USB modules inbuilt. And then on the other side, we have a USB blaster too, which I think is for JTAG. We'll again have to confirm. On the back side, we have a couple of other things which we'll see what they are. Uh, of course, a 10 gigabit uh, or, or a gigabit ethernet. I'm not sure what the e exact specs are on this one. We'll take a look in a moment, the actual SOC. And this is a pretty uh, interesting uh, bit switch and that's I think for uh, you know either turning on just the SOC part and then uh, you know running it from the flash memory uh, or turning on the arm cores as well so this particular SOC apart from having the FPGA stuff actually has two Cortex A9 arm cores uh, and then uh, the actual FPGA so it does boot Linux uh, and we'll see that in a moment so uh, a 5 volt barrel jack this is where the uh, provided adapter connects in and then let's go through all the other stuff so it actually has a gravitational sensor right there this tiny chip and my finger is pointing that's the gravitation sensor uh, and then uh, 10 uh, analog to digital pinouts and then uh, I think on, at the back is our ADC chip right there uh, and then what else have we got four user programmable switches a uh, few LEDs here and there that's one strip I think there are a couple more somewhere else and I think at the back is the ESP or EPS EPCS uh, memory uh, I think that is to uh, store the code for FPGA when it's not booting up in the um, um, like it's not booting up with the ARM cores so again correct me if I'm wrong uh, anywhere uh, it's just I'm just taking it out for the first time uh, trying to get on the FPGA stuff uh, and this is the LTC uh, Two by seven or fourteen pin header, uh, so that's about that. All right. So apparently, uh, all the instructions to get started and everything else is stored on the uh, the SD card. I think that's where it should be. And if when you power it on and connect the uh, USB OTG to your main computer, uh, it actually opens up as a mass storage device and has all the instructions and an HTML page to get you guys started um, more or less like a beagle bone uh, has so that's that um, what I really want to see is where these foot stand fit in because it's either um, I have to remove the hex screws at the bottom uh, and then replace them with these 
or they just go over the hex grows uh, and looks like they are struggling a bit to go right over them but we'll, we'll see all right so they do fit over the hex grows which is fairly nice and there you go um one foot stand Now I am being a bit picky here, but um, I have no reason to believe why a dev board like this should come with only uh, a, a, an acrylic sheet on one side and not on the other. Honestly, there are more chances of it getting um, short circuited or something, uh, you know, something metallic being touched on the bottom side because. A, happens to be sitting on a table and if you are an electronics guy uh, you are going to have weird wires and stuff lying around and they might uh, you know touch something or short something out down here so I think there should be a full acrylic sheet here but again I'm just getting a bit picky so it seems that it's manufactured by Panasonic I hadn't noticed the logo before so it's either so the sock or the whole board being manufactured by Sony actually there are uh, a couple of interesting logos so ISSI analog devices and linear technologies microchip um, I th th TI Texas Instruments they're just it's just full of logos so the longer you stare at it the more logo it appears to have so TI ISSI microchip analog devices panasonic linear technologies and then some german german probably uh, i have no idea how to pronounce that, that name but uh, th that they are and then of course um it just says de10 nano on the uh, actual board so yeah uh, many logos at the bottom that's that's what there is on the bottom many logos not much else all right so nice rubber feet it's all um it's not going to move anywhere on my desk i think we should go ahead and put it up all right so it's booting up uh dual core linux uh dual core um processors so the other two penguins and we go into X space just in a bit and there it is unfortunately um the as you can see it's not properly registering the resolution of the display now that could be as well an issue with the display or the um the driver so let's go ahead and take a look at what linux kernel is running and it's 4.1 uh it's, it's fairly old not as old as 8 point uh, not as old as 3.18 but it's still old i'm not sure if there has been an update issued or something like that because we're not using debian and the other thing that you might have noticed is we are straight into root uh we didn't boot into any sort of user so uh, it's not Debian apt command won't work. It's Armstrong, which is based on, um, I think it's based on Open Embedded, so it could have its own package manager. But I really haven't had a lot of time to play around with it, uh, apart from just booting it once before this. So um, apart from that, uh, so we can check the CPUs so what they are. So again, dual core uh, ARM v7 and uh, all that are soft FPGA. I'm not sure about the clock speed, and I think it's an ARM Cortex A9, which has a gigabit uh, link speed. So that is nice so we have a gigabit ethernet on board pretty darn good so that's about it for the 
video i think it's already has been fairly long uh next video we might take a look at a few other things on this board uh i have no idea when that's going to be but hopefully soon and that's about it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one